Welcome to Super Fast Tortoise. And today, we are going to go through the top 10 Ikoria Layer of Behemoth cards for Cube and Commander. The cards we are going to list today are my best picks for cards that can go both in Cube and Commander. Ikoria has a lot of interesting cards in it and a lot of fun mechanics that are new. So obviously I could not put every card I wanted on the top 10 list. So we are going to have a few honorable mentions. The first honorable mentions I have on the list are the obvious inclusions of the five Triumph Trilands. They're really good, they're really solid. You know they're gonna work great with fetch lands and that's the problem. They're gonna push the price up of fetch lands so they cannot, for that reason, make my top 10 list. My honorable mention number two, Unbreakable Bond. This card is a great recursion spell. Grabbing a creature from the yard, putting it on the battlefield, and giving it lifelink is great value, especially for budget cubes and commander decks. Honorable mention number three, Mythos of Brokos. It's a four mana green spell that lets you return two permanent cards from your graveyard to your hand. But if black and blue was used to cast it, you get to search your library for any card and put it in your graveyard. This card is what green needs, but it's only my honorable mentions because it has to be played in Soul Tie. And for my last honorable mention, we have Narset of the Ancient Way, our first ever Jeskai Planeswalker. She is a Spells Matters Planeswalker, and that's the problem with her. Not all decks are Spells Matter, so she has to be in my honorable mentions. And we have a good card for Spells Matters in the top 10 list, but it's just way better than this because it fits in more strategies. First, what makes the top 10 list? I've broken down four categories for this 10 list for cards to meet the criteria. One, I put in cards that I will see played more often and most often in both Cube and Commander and more than just a unique ability. Two, I put in cards that don't need to fit a certain theme or strategy. Three, I put in cards that add a unique effect or fits perfectly in a color. Four, cards that add a rare slot for Commander and Cube. So with that in mind, let's start with number one, Whirlwind of Thought. This is a Jeskai enchantment. It costs a generic blue, red, and white that says whenever you cast a non-creature spell, draw a card. This card fits in the Spells Matters theme decks perfectly. Also will slot in any other Jeskai deck. With Blind Obedience, Day Judgment, Giant Killers, Adventurous Ability, Oblivion Ring, and Swords to Plowshares getting a draw on top of its normal abilities, feeding your hand makes it pretty solid. Also, in blue, having Control Magic, Aetherize, and Counterspell cantripping off this card gives you more power into your removal selections, getting to those creatures that you need, or those game winning spells. With Mystical Tutor and Vapor Snag getting a cantrip, you're just going to go far with this. Being able to draw a card when you play your Planeswalkers like Chandra, or getting draw triggers from Devil's Play twice because of its flashback, forever giving your creatures haste by drawing a card when it enters the battlefield, Lightning Bolt, dealing 3 damage for 1 mana and drawing a card, or throw a possibility in drawing an additional card when you cast it. This spell, this enchantment, Whirlwind of Thought, is really strong, and that's why it starts at number 1. Now for number two, Song of Creation is a teamer enchantment. It costs a generic, a green, blue, and red. It is an enchantment that has three things going for it. First, you may play an additional land on each of your turns. And secondly, whenever you cast a spell, even if it's countered whenever you cast it, you draw two cards. And at the beginning of your end step, you discard your hand, which is not really a drawback at all. This enchantment fits three main strategies for its colors. First, you have the self meal deck with Thassa's Oracle, Jace, Wilder of Mysteries, and Laboratory Maniac. This deck itself will be filled with Song of Creation. It is crazy. Then, you have your ramp package 
strategy with Azusa Lost but Seeking, Dryad of the Lysian Grove, Wayward Swartooth, and there are others out there. But this is a strong ramp speeding package. This will help you get your big creatures out. With your red, you got your X Fireball win conditions like Banefire, Bonfire of the Damned, Flame Blast Dragon, where you're just pumping X because you're ramping up with your green and removing with your blue. This is a solid card, and that's why it makes my number two. Here at number three, we have Barrier Breach. It costs two generic and green for an instant. It exiles up to three target enchantments with Cycling 2. This card is pushed to take care of those pesky enchantments that get in your way. It does not affect artifacts, sadly, like other cards, and that's why it's at number three. But I know this card will see a lot of play in both Commander and Cube. It goes alongside with cards like Thrashing Brontodon, Reclamation Sage, and Ascetic Slime, which have their own unique abilities, but will slot in both Commander and Cube just fine. And that's why it's number three. Here at number four, we have Luca Copperco Outcast, a Planeswalker that costs three generic and two red. Legendary Planeswalker Luca. This guy is packed with three abilities that you would normally see in a green format, but each ability has a red flavor. And that's what makes this great. He is green with chaos and all red. His first ability is plus one. Exile the top three cards of your library and creature cards exiled this way gain. You may cast this card from exile as long as you control a Luka Planeswalker. This is pretty solid because if you get him back after he's destroyed and there's creatures in your exile, they're castable again. That is red digging. Then his negative two is a chaos warp ability where you exile a creature you control, then reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card with higher converted mana cost and put that onto the battlefield and the rest in the bottom of your library in a random order. His negative seven ability gives all your creatures a soul fire's ability where you basically say, my creature deals damage equal to its power to your face. And it's to each opponent. That's pretty solid. Giving cards like Chaos Warp, Throws of Chaos, and Souls Fire a great Planeswalker to have. Now, Throws of Chaos does not get the Planeswalker, but it's chaotic, and I love it. So is Chaos Warp. Chaos Warp is chaotic, and it doesn't discriminate against converted mana cost, but it's still a fun effect for Chaos Warp, also being instant. Soul's Fire does the same thing as his last ability, but for a single creature. So this fits in a great red strategy, doing what red does best for its colors. So it's bringing a new arc of flavor in red. And that's why he's my number four. Coming in at number five, we have Brokos. Our bro Apex of Forever. He costs two generic, a black, green, and blue. He's a legendary creature, Nightmare Beast Elemental. He has Mutate for two generic, a blue or black, and two green. And you can cast this card for its Mutate cost as long as you control a non-human creature and attach it to it on the bottom or top of it. And you're usually going to put this guy on top. He has Trample. He's a 6-6 creature with a great ability that you may cast Broco Apex of Forever from your graveyard using his Mutate ability. We don't get this ability very often. This effect is really strong, making it a really strong card for both Cube and Commander. He fits in Muldrotha decks. He's a good target for Animate Dead. He can latch onto Underworld Lich as a top creature, having the ability to pay for life and make it indestructible until the turn. And Slippery Boggle, meaning your small creatures like game that are poop can be big 6-6 six, six targets with Broco in the graveyard or just his mutate ability. This card is very solid, being my number five pick. Swimming in at number six, we have Voracious Great Shark, a three generic two blue creature shark. It has flash, and whenever Great Shark enters the battlefield, counter target artifact 
or creature spell. This card is insane. A counter spell on a creature is always a strong ability. It's not the best ability always, but it's very strong. Why it's on my number six slot. Because creatures like Mystic Snake, Silumgar Sorcerer, and Frilled Mystic are really strong because they're counter spells on a body. Now, Voracious Great Shark does not have the scope of what it targets like these three other cards listed, but it's strong and it's a good sized body for five mana and counters a creature or artifact spell. Making this my number six pick. Flying in at number seven, we have Luminous Broodmoth, also known as Mothra Supersonic Queen. For two generic and two white, we have a creature that's an insect. And it has flying, and whenever a creature you control without flying dies, return it to the battlefield under its owner's control with a flying counter on it. I'm really liking these ability counters on creatures it's like enchantments but skipping a step this ability is really great it works with mono white weenies it works like enchantment auras but it's a separate step and luminous brood moth is crazy really good it gives your board wipes your opponent's control a weaker effect because you'll get your creatures back so you can get triggers from sun titan again you can give Danatha Capuchin Paragon flying on top of its first strike vigilance and lifelink. Thalia Heretic Cathar comes back controlling your creatures coming into play tapped and getting the extra draw bonus trigger when Wall of Omens comes in play. This card reaches beyond these creatures but these are just examples of what it touches. Luminous Broodmoth does a lot for Mono White and making it a powerful number 7 entry. Looming in at the number 8 spot on the list, we have a spooky, eerie ultimatum costing 2 white, 3 black, and 2 green. This sorcery has a powerful effect for both cube and commander. Both being a singleton format, this card says, return any number of permanent cards with different names from your graveyard to the battlefield. In cube, this is a win condition coming back from a long battle. In commander, this is a card getting back a lot of cards that are needed to sustain yourself. This card is crazy. You have cards like Rise of the Dark Realms, Liliana Death Wilder, and Faith's Reward that do similar effects. This card adds to the rare ability that these cards offer, making a spooky number 8. Creeping and skulking in at the number 9 slot, Fiend Artisan costs 2 black or 2 green, or a mix of both. It's a creature nightmare, a 1-1 one, one that says Fiend Artisan gets plus 1 plus 1 for each creature card in your graveyard. You pay X and a black or green and tap it. You can sacrifice another creature pumping up Fiend Artisan to search your library for another creature with the same converted mana cost or less equal to X and put it onto the battlefield. Then you shuffle your library and you can activate this ability only as a sorcery. This card is very strong by itself. You can build decks just by this card itself as the main thing in standard modern legacy whatever but in cube and commander it fits different graveyard strategies and for example Golgori has lotless troll a two mana two one trample discard a creature card but a plus one plus one counter a lotless troll a graveyard synergy vulture zombie three generic a black and green flyer that says whenever a card is put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere put a plus one plus one counter on vulture zombies and you think that doesn't fit well you're destroying creatures in these colors of your opponents bigger creatures kill smaller creatures that goes with the synergy of vulture zombie and the fiend all right rhizome lurcher enters the battlefield that gets a plus one plus one counter for each creature card in your graveyard that's crazy then you have deck feeders like secure a tribe elder which you sacrifice to search your library for a basic land and put it into play tap that's insane buried alive searches your library for two creature cards and put them in the graveyard that's like a permanent buff spell for your fiend artisan Greater good, just a solid enchantment for the synergy and theme. Making Fiend Artisan my number 9 pick. 
Coming in at number 10, the most metal of all cards on the list. This card is unique and is needed in the format of Commander and Cube. Runus Ultimatum costs 2 red, 3 white, and 2 black. It's a sorcery offering a very rare ability that these colors need. Now, black and white do not need board wipes because they have a lot of board wipes. But what this does is it wipes all your opponent's non land permanents away. It says, destroy all non land permanents your opponents control. This is crazy. This is insane. This is needed because this color combination loses out and loses a lot of gas on the way, giving you an advantage to gain back your stride in the late game. Ruinous Ultimatum is the most metal of all cards on the tortoise list of top 10 cards for Cube and Commander. And why? Because we have Plague Wind, we have Ingrix Wake, and we don't have a lot of other cards that do this. So this is what's rocking it at the top. That's it. That is the end of my top 10 cards for Ikoria, Layer of Behemoth, top 10 cards for Cube and Commander. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it very much. Please like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications so you can keep updated when I bring up new videos. Also, share this video so people can get a view of this list because I believe this is a great list. Now, if you have cards that you put on this list, let me know in the comment selection below and I'll get back to you because I respond to comments on YouTube.